See ya, how are you? I am Bernardo Berrati. I am a rising sophomore at Drexel University, and this is my first Alpha convention. Um, I moved from Venezuela around three years ago, and I am having a little bit of trouble of breaking that um, stereotype that Latino immigrants have um, in the United States. What advice can you give me and the other thousands and millions of Latino immigrants that are moving to the States for better opportunities but don't want to lose their essence and their Latino spice. Can you, can you just say, sorry, can you just say a little bit more about what you've been running into? Give us an example or two. Um, I don't want to get political. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, um, no. if, if you want me to go more in detail, I, I moved to, with my mom and my sister, to a, a very, small town in New Jersey, um, Malvar, I don't know how many people have heard of it. It's not that far away from, from the city of New York. And most of the kids there are, um, have been there, their families have been there for years. They're mostly um, white. I was the first international student in a school that has been there for 70 years. And you'll be surprised how many questions have been asked about whether or not we were shoes in Venezuela, if there was McDonald's in Venezuela, or if there were even computers in Venezuela. So those, and again, without getting too political, um, I don't think, you can see it in the media how Latinos are perceived, and I wanna, I wanna break that stereotype, and I wanna show that we're professional, that we're here for. Yeah. Well, you know, your, your, your question is, is kind of relevant to a lot of us uh, in different ways. But, but the punchline answer to your question is do what you need to do, what you want to do, and do it well. And people will see the outcomes that you generate <clears throat> as you perform, whether it be in your community, in your neighborhood, in school, or ultimately in the jobs that you have. I mean, performance is the great equalizer because you, you can't skew it that much unless you have somebody like maybe one of the political people that you know, doesn't understand a lot of things. But, and, and, I, and by the way, I am a Republican. So, so you know, I always look at facts and data. So I would just say that, that that's very important. I can tell you a quick story if Charlie lets me. When I went to Australia, to run the, comp the country's largest company. The day that it was announced, I had not been there, didn't know anybody. The day that it was announced in the Financial Review, which is like the Wall Street Journal of Australia, there was a headline that said, New Telstra Chief, and it had a caricature of a Mexicano on a burro, con un serape y sombrero, así. Right? And so there was a stereotype of this new CEO that was coming to the country. Now, my wife, who wasn't with me when I arrived there, and she saw it because she went online and she saw this, she called me up that night and said, Why are you doing this? Right? I had already turned them down two or three times, but they were persistent and they really wanted me to go do a transformation and a privatization. So I told her that night, I said, now more than ever, I'm going to show everybody what somebody named Trujillo is capable of doing so that the stereotype, <laughs> so that the stereotype that people have will now change based upon what you do not what somebody thinks that you're capable of doing. And I would say the same thing for any of us in the room. And that goes to anybody. We're gonna to have to cut the questions off there. I'm gonna give the last word to Saul. Can you please answer the question that wasn't asked of you that you would have wanted asked and answered? Wow. Um, I'm not sure I would want it asked. <laughs> <laughs>
No, but, but I guess one of the questions that I get asked at my stage, because I've, as Charlie said, I've run three different, you know, $50 billion market cap companies. I've worked all over the world. I've done a lot of things. I've innovated, et cetera, et cetera. And people say to me today, so why are you still doing what you're doing and why are you still engaged in all that? And for me, business is a sport. And I love playing sports. And I love winning. And once upon a time, there was a basketball coach. Uh, he's still alive and he still coaches. That I had come and talk to one of my large sales team or uh, meetings. And he had a saying, people asked him, well, gee, you're, you're a workaholic, aren't you? And is that how you get your results? Because you're a workaholic. And he said, no, I'm, I like to think of myself differently. My vocation is my vacation. And so for me, I look at business, I think there's so many things that are yet to be done that somebody's got to do them. When I think about my country, and I think about all the things that we could be doing, growing, competing, making life better, depolarizing the way our society is today, there's so many things. And then just in terms of my own personal family and and things that I could be doing better as a father and as a husband and as a grandfather, who I'm now a grandfather. And, uh, and there's just so much more to life. And so the point is, is that there's always more. And if you've got that notion that there's always more, whether it be in your job today or 10 years from now or 20 years from now, or in your personal lives, to me, that, that should be a driving motivation for how you get up every morning and think about what more can I do? So thank you. Thank you, thank you. Big hand for Saul, thank you very much.